Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how you can use the evaluation harness by Elutor AI. First of all, I left my equipment at home and I'm on a vacation right now. So the voice quality may not be that good. So sorry for that. But as always, I will continue to provide you high quality content. So first, why evaluation harness? So there has been a lot of debate on how we can evaluate the benchmarks what to use, what is the universal way, etc. Also, there's an interesting blog post here. What's going on with the OpenLLM leaderboard? I suggest you to read this as well. I will put it into the description. But overall, the reason that I chose to show you the evaluation harness by Elutor AI is that it has pretty much became a standard for evaluating LLMs both in the industry and in academia and it is highly likely that you will encounter this or you will encounter results that is produced by using this library. In overall I will show you how you can use it to evaluate your LLMs first on a MacBook using the MPS or Apple Metal Accelerator and then we will switch to NVIDIA devices. I will show you how you can do it on an NVIDIA device. Then I will show you how you can do it and different ways you can evaluate your LLMs on multiple NVIDIA devices. I will put the GitHub link into the description down below and everything I did I will put it into GitHub as well. And before we start, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, what you want to see next, let me know in the comment section and let's just go. Now let's start evaluating LLMs using the evaluation harness on Mac using MPS or Apple Metal. We'll start by installing LM evaluation harness. We are going to follow the same procedures with Mac, Linux or whatever you are using. We are going to copy this under the install section. Now I'm in my Visual Studio code in my MacBook. So I'm going to just paste it. Since I already installed it, it won't install again. But in your case, it will install. Let's press enter and wait for it. Okay, so the process is complete and as you can see, we are inside the LM Evaluation Harness repository. If we execute ls, we will see all the files of this repository. So since this library is installed, you have two options to do the evaluations. You can execute everything in the terminal since these are just commands. But for the sake of consistency, I will do everything inside a Jupyter Notebook. So I'm inside my Jupyter Notebook. The first command that we'll see is that LM eval task list. What it will do is that it will list us all the tasks that evaluation harness supports. So if you enter it, it will list us all these tasks. So there are a lot of them, so it is very long. As you can see, VS Code truncated it. But if you like, you can just take a look at them. Now let's move on to the actual evaluation part. We are gonna start with exclamation mark since we are executing terminal commands inside a notebook, we will use that. If you are executing directly from the terminal, you can omit that. The way we call the evaluation harness is lm underscore eval. So we will use a couple of flags here. First is model, we will use a hugging face model. So we will just put that here. Second one is model arcs. Here we will feed the path, the hugging face path to our model. So in this case, it is in hugging face TB. I will use small LLM 135 million instruct. You can use whatever you want, but this model, since it is small, it is fast and fits into the memory. Also, you can just like this, if you give the local path to your model to here as an argument, it will load your local model. Next is the data type. So usually we are using bfloat16, but since we are on a MacBook, if you try to do bfloat16 with MPS, you will get an error because MPS doesn't support bfloat16, but it supports float16. So we will use d type equals to b d type equals to float16. And we will give some tasks. In this case, we will give two popular tasks, Mino Grande and Lambda OpenAI. So how this works is that you give this tasks flag 
and you enter the tasks you want from task list that we did above. But more or less, I believe you have an idea on what tasks to give and you will just comma separate all of the tasks and this evaluation harness will evaluate all of these tasks. Now, the one of the important things for especially Mac is the device flag. So we are using the MPS accelerator. So we are going to pass the MPS flag to the device and the batch size, of course, it depends on your machine. In my case, 256 work just fine. And we can specify the output path with output path flag. In this case, I want the results to be written to out folder. So these are the flags that I used for this. However, if you want to see all of the arguments, what you need to do is simple. You come to the repository again, you go down and here they use a guide detailing the full list of supported arguments. You just click here, go here, and as you can see, we have all the supported arguments here, tasks, task lists. You can set the arguments for generation, such as top P, top K, like we said, batch size, device, we used NPS, output path, and there are a bunch of other arguments that I suggest you check out. It may be useful to you. I will also put a link of this page in the description as well. So let's come here and let's just execute this. Actually, I will decrease the batch size to 32 because I just ran this and it was so overwhelming for my system with all the recording and all the other tabs. All of my recordings just crashed and I had to start over. So I'm decreasing it to 32 now. You just decide according to your system and let's run this again. We can see it is using the device MPS, which is good. It is using the accelerator, the Apple accelerator. And now let's go and let's see if we can track the GPU usage. Okay, so as you can see, if you go to the activity monitor, go to window and toggle on the GPU history, it will show you this, which is the GPU usage. The most left was from my initial run, where all of my recordings and everything got crashed. But now, as you can see, it, it went down since I terminated everything and it started going up again. And now it is being used in its full capacity. So this is very similar to the NVIDIA SMI. You can just open this and track your GPU usage here. And now let's just wait for this to complete. Now the execution is complete. Let's also check out the GPU user. So as we can see, during that peak point, we did the evaluation and now it went down and it is now right in the middle and the GPU usage has decreased back to normal now. What will you get is this output, basically it will be the tasks, Lambda OpenAI, the metrics, we have accuracy and perplexity, we have Vino Grande, we have accuracy metric, and the values and the standard errors. Now let's also look to the output files. In here we set the output path to be that out. So let's come here. So as we can see here, it created a new folder with the name of the model that we are using with the exact same path, eigenphase TB, eigenphase TB, and we have the results.json file here. So this is a JSON file which contains the results for Lambda OpenAI, we have the perplexity, we have the standard error, we have the accuracy and accuracy standard error. Same for Reno Grande, you have accuracy and accuracy standard error. You have the configurations for the tasks for the Lambda the OpenAI. We have our data types, we have our model here. Same for the Reno Grande. So this is a multiple choice task. There is that. Again, we have the data type, we have the versions and we have some other configurations such as number of parameters, it is 135 million model. So this is correct. Random seed, date, some environment info, some template information, some tokenizer information and the evaluation time. So this is basically how this library works and this is how you use it on an Apple device.
Now let's switch to working with NVIDIA GPU and multiple NVIDIA GPUs. Now I'm inside my Kaggle notebook. The first thing I'm going to do is open up this panel and as an accelerator, I will use two T4 GPUs. So I will show you how to do it with a single GPU, but there will be cases where you have multiple GPUs and you wanna, you wanna take an advantage of it or your model is so big that it won't fit to a single GPU so that you would like to use multiple GPUs. We will go over them all one by one. First thing that we will do is install the evaluation harness. How we are going to do it is run this code, git clone. After this is done, I will copy this, open up the terminal, paste it, and copy this. Open up the terminal again, paste this, hit enter. Now it is installed, we can just close the console and restart the notebook. For that, restart and clear outputs and everything should be set now. Let's start by doing the exact same evaluation we did with our MacBook, just with the difference of using a single NVIDIA GPU. Let's paste that. As you can see, everything is the same. The only difference is device is CUDA 0, which means that it will do the evaluation using the zeroth GPU. So let's run this. We can, we can also view the GPU usage from here. As you can see, this is the zero GPU and this is the first GPU. And zero GPU is getting utilized, whereas the first GPU is not, which is what we expected. And we get the results with the same format here. We had some warnings initially, but you can just overlook those warnings. Let's also come here and see the files being saved. As you can see, under out, we have the files, we have the resulting JSONs here. I won't go over them again since we did that during the make part. If you are curious what these JSON files look like, just go to the end of the make part of this video. So this is the regular thing we did with the, with the MPS. Now we did with a single NVIDIA GPU, but we have two GPUs, so we can use those two GPUs. One of the ways we can do that is also actually when you go to this, to the GitHub page of this evaluation harness, and when you go down here in, under the user guide, it has the multi GPU evaluation part. Okay, we will mostly be following that. You can also check this part out. To utilize this two GPUs we have, one thing that we can do is we can load our model into each GPU and feed the data for them separately. For that, we will be using the accelerate. What we are going to do is simple. We will just add accelerate launch M just before the LM eval command, and we won't specify any GPUs. So with this, the model will be loaded to each GPU separately. So let's run this. Also, let's open the GPU utilization to track what's going on. As you can see, we are utilizing both of the GPUs. Also as a task, I chose HelloSwag because it is a larger data set and it takes longer to do the evaluations. By this, I could actually show you the GPU usage of this approach. And here we have the results. So you don't have to worry about these warnings. Now let's move on to another scenario where you have a model that is a big model, for example, like this one, 13B Lama 2 chat model. So this is a big model that won't fit into a single GPU. We can actually verify this by running this. What we expect that it will give us a CUDA out of memory error. And we get an error. Let's see what error is that. And CUDA out of memory error, like we expected. Now how we can overcome this and to make an evaluation with this big model that doesn't fit into a single GPU is that we can fit this model into multiple GPUs. And how we are going to do that is like this. Everything is the same. We execute LM eval. And in the model arguments, we pass this keyword, parallelize equals to true. So this is the key and we don't set any device. 
So there are some arguments that you can set specific GPUs, but in this case, since we have only two GPUs anyways, I didn't set any arguments and we can just run this and see that it will actually do the evaluation and it will utilize multiple GPUs. And as you can see, we are able to fit this model into this machine by splitting, by splitting it into two GPUs, GPU zero and GPU one. One thing that you may realize is that the utilization in one GPU is 100% and in the other one, it is in 0%. Even though the model is split between two GPUs, my take on this is because even though the model is split into two GPUs, the data still flows into one GPU. And again, as you can see, it just moved into the zero GPU and it fluctuates. The solution for this is the merge two approaches. One is the one that we did in the beginning with Accelerate, where we parallelize the data. And this one where we split a single model into multiple GPUs. So let's try that. First, I will kill this because it will take a long time. If you like, you can just keep it going. I will just kill this and merge those two approaches. What we want to do is we will literally merge the commands. So we will accelerate launch M like our regular command. And additionally, we will add this parallelize equals the true flag as well. So by this, what it will happen is that we will split the model into multiple GPUs and we will utilize all GPUs at the same time. For that, let's run this and again, view the GPU utilizations. Now it started doing the evaluation. Let's look at the GPU consumptions. Yes, as you can see, the, G the model split into two GPUs and we were able to load this. Also, the GPU utilization for both of them is at full. The, this is the optimal stage, like this is the optimal way to utilize your GPUs. And again, this will take a time, a while for the evolution to be complete. So I will just kill this job. If you, are, if you want to evaluate and see the results, you can just keep it going. I'll just kill it. And that's all I wanted to show you. I will upload all of these notebooks into GitHub and put the link to the GitHub into the description. To summarize, we used the evaluation harness with a MacBook using MPS accelerator. Then we switched to an NVIDIA GPU. We used a small model with multiple GPUs. Then we switch to a large model that actually doesn't fit into a single GPU. Then we split that model into multiple GPUs. And actually we saw how we can utilize every GPUs to their full potential. So this is not a full guide on how to use this evaluation harness library. Like I suggested, go check out these additional arguments. Go check out actually like read this documentation, check out additional things that you can give, additional settings. If you're in industry, it is probable that you are using NEMO models. You can check out how you can evaluate with these NEMO models, etc. So that was all for me today. I hope my voice was not that bad since I don't have my equipment with me, but thank you for listening. Don't forget to like the video, what you wanna see next, comment it out and let me know. Subscribe to my channel and see you at another video. Bye bye.